um, with protocol already being established, uh, also from my side. Good afternoon, minister, partners, colleagues, to this very special day. Um, first, to bring you back into time in 2007, the head of states of the Caribbean region got together because they all of a sudden realized that people in our countries were dying of diseases that were preventable, and to name a few, diabetes, cancer, hypertension, and it had been happening in a way that they called it a silent epidemic. But when uh, trend analysis was done and they looked at the big numbers, thousands and thousands of persons in our region not only dying but also having very long-term illnesses due to these diseases, it was uh, then that they realized something had to happen. And because of that, there was a historical summit by the head of states in 2007 and I say historical because usually the heads of state, they get together for important economic uh, discussions on tourism and uh, all kinds of economic subjects. But the historical part of it was that this time they got together to discuss what they call the silent epidemic of chronic non-communicable diseases. During that summit, they took decisions, 15 decisions, which countries were asked to implement before a certain time. And in commemoration of that day, because they thought it was so historical, that it was important to also introduce something that will always bring us back to remember that special day, but always to have at least one day in a year where we could commemorate the importance of the decision, but also pay special attention to these uh, non-communicable diseases we were discussing, but also linked very much to the different risk factors that can lead to these diseases, such as physical inactivity, tobacco smoking, um, nutrition, uh, you know, um, lack of proper nutritional habits. So all these uh, risk factors were common risk factors to these diseases. So the, that's how Caribbean Wellness Day was born because the summit was on the 15th of September 2007. That was a Saturday. So they decided to commemorate every second Saturday in September uh, as Caribbean Wellness Day. The overall team for from that year on was love that body. Because the philosophy is if you love your body, you won't do anything to harm your body, be it the outside or the inside. So love your body and out of that came various teams we had to work on first few years as uh, more awareness, creating awareness on that. And then since 2012, there was a series of activities, a series of teams that um, we had to focus on. 2012, building the foundation for building healthy lifestyles. 2013, the team was safeguarding the health of our youth for a brighter future. 14 was preserving the workforce for national and regional development. 15, improving the quality of life of the region's aging, aging population. And this is where we are going to pay some more attention to today. And then for 2016 and onward, the focus, the themes that have been suggested are for this year, healthy children in healthy environments. 2017, a brighter future for our youth. So repeating some of the things that were already uh, celebrated in the previous years to make sure that you don't only use the day for one ad hoc activity, but to make sure that you use that ad hoc activity to introduce plans and programs in your country that have a more sustained character. So that's why we are here today. Um, First of all, first and foremost, to um, launch our program, and we will do that with the calendar. And I have to thank the minister that he took time out of his busy schedule to be with us. And I also have to thank the secretary general. Um, she sits there in the audience, so you won't be able to see her because the camera is directed this way. 
But I do have to give the Secretary General some credit to this, because when we were discussing last year, Caribbean Wellness Day and the aging population, and we told her what was the intention, one of the first things she said was, you know, Virginia, I would love to see this thing become a more sustained thing because for years I wanted to do something with Jimson St. Martin to involve them and, you know, give back to the community by introducing some complimentary hours in their gyms. And that's also what we use in our approach to um, the program that we have developed and that we will present to you today. Um, we have to also thank our partners because as CPS only we will not be able to, we will be able to initiate, we will be able to propose, but we will never be able to implement and sustain it. So I have to thank our colleagues from the Windward Island Physical Therapy Association, our colleague from the INI Fitness, and our colleague from the White and Yellow Cross Foundation to partner with us as the kickoff of this program. These partners, it doesn't mean that we will stick with these partners. It's just that we will initiate the program with this partner, with these partners, and then reach out, and we already reached out to the different organizations, different gyms on St. Martin to see how more partners can work together with us as stakeholders and even the businesses. So also the letters went out to the businesses. Um, we, our initial activity was a big activity last year at the White and Yellow Cross Foundation where we partnered with almost all the elderly organizations on St. Martin and we had a wonderful activity at the White and Yellow Cross Foundation. And there from the feedback we received from the elderly, it was also clear that they were also um, waiting for an opportunity to be more active in their life because they enjoyed it so much and they mentioned also, they gave us that feedback how important it was. So that is to give you a short introduction on why we're here and how it, last year and the years before led to this activity and um, also to thank in advance our partners in this to make this a hopefully very successful endeavor as a national program. So um, after the minister has spoken, we will also do the, the, the formalities that go together with this program. Uh, good afternoon, honorable minister, distinguished guest. Uh, my name is Pepijn Brandenberg. I'm a physical therapist at the White and Yellow Cross Care Foundation. Um, I'm gonna tell a little bit from our side of the story. Uh, the longing for longevity without decrepitude has been known for ages. Uh, around the world, although life expectancy is increasing for most people, a wholly healthy old age remains a seldom seen sight. But how do we measure this healthy old age? How do we actually measure health? There are very definitions of health. The World Health Organization describes it as a complete state of physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of uh, disease or infirmity. Uh, others, like René Jules Dubois, describe it more as a, to be healthy does not mean to be free of disease. It means to be, that you can function, do whatever you want to do, and become what you ever want to become. So those are two very different definitions with different ways to interpret it. As stated, life expectancy is increasing, and so forth. The proportion of elderly uh, in our society, especially over 85, is to, uh, will reach unprecedented levels. For many chronic diseases like uh, diabetes, hypertension, uh, osteoporosis, prevalence also increases in age, uh, which in turn causes a disproportionate health burden, which is going to be new for the island of St. Martin. Uh, now, is there anything we can do about it? Is there, uh, is there a pill that either can cure or prevent those diseases? Is there a cream which can prevent the degeneration of the frontal lobe, for example? Is there a tonic that can play both a role in preventing Alzheimer's or uh, increasing the function of a patient, patient with Alzheimer's? Uh, the answer is a clear no. However, increasing the physical activity level can have a positive effect on all the aforementioned examples. Exercise can improve stamina, 
strength, flexibility, and overall physical fitness. It can also improve mobility and reduce onset of mobility-related disabilities. Uh, regular exercise can also reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease, stroke, hypertension, uh, uh, diabetes, osteoporosis, several types of cancer, depression, decubitus, and cognitive decline. Does everybody know with what decubitus is? Well, I don't I think the answer is yes. Um, often I tell my patients, because I've been working here for four and a half years, often my patients ask me, like, is there, can I just take a pill? Can I rub it on something to fix it? And the answer is no. But if you put all the positive effects of exercise into a pill, that would be the highest selling pill, probably in the Caribbean, probably in the world. Um, exercise itself, just walking your dog or standing on one leg while you brush your teeth, that's not going to cut it, that's not enough. Exercise should be a mixture of various activities. It should be uh, structured aerobic exercise, so for example, walking for an extended period of time, uh, biking, rowing, stuff like that. Also functional strength training, so for example, uh, standing up, sitting down, walking stairs, uh, flexibility also, just reaching for stuff, legs, arms, the back, everything. Neuromuscular exercise, so we're thinking more like coordination and balance. And also a very important thing that people often forget is rest. After exercise, you need to recover. If you train seven days a week, especially for the older generation, that will backfire. Um, so how often does an older, people, older person have to exercise? Um, there's different guidelines, but the latest one from 2008 states uh, daily moderate uh, a moderate intensity exercise for about 15 to 30 minutes, which can be spread throughout the day. Uh, and it has to be something adjusted to the person's wishes and capabilities. And person of 85, you don't tell them, go bike for 30 minutes. That also will backfire and often forget. Uh, a lot of people here often do not like exercise. So always take into consideration what are their hobbies, what was their work, what they used to do, and from there you start thinking of a program which fits in their life. Uh, this is what we intend to do with our program for the mo more movement for the elderly. Uh, first, we will very thoroughly explain the, how the body will respond to the exercise, uh, what, what is a normal feeling afterwards, what is not. Often uh, people here get very uh, scared from like muscle pain afterwards, but it is actually, it can be a normal thing. Uh, also, a lot of people here have never engaged in such physical activity, so the, the information beforehand is very important. Uh, we also talk about safety, of course, we work with old people, if they fall down and break a hip, that's our worst nightmare. Uh, we talk about the intensity and educate on the benefits in relation to, to their maybe already existing diseases or uh, handicaps. Uh, we will use all, our, in, in, with the Wide Yellow Cross Foundation, we will use all our machines in the gym. We will show them how to make functional daily movements into a simple to-do at home exercise. Uh, we will play various sports. Like for example, having a bunch of older people try to play some football or basketball or volleyball, badminton. For them, it's completely new, but it's a great exercise. Also makes it fun, interactive. It's a group thing, which also straight away also stimulates and motivates. Um, we will make it as interactive as possible. We're not just going to tell them do this and walk away. It's going to be an interactive gathering. Uh, and above all, we're going to have fun while doing it, and we're trying to show them that age is only a number. Uh, I'm very pleased to be a part of this initiative that's supporting elderly to be more active. I'm the owner of INI Fitness. My name is Sergio Marica. I came on the island in 2012. I used to live in Italy, in Germany, and in Holland. And so, since 2013, I started up my own business. And one of the main subjects was uh, supporting the people of St. Martin, especially elderly people and chronically ill people about the benefits of exercise. I believe that exercise is the key to healthy aging. Now my role uh, with this program is actually uh, supporting uh, the elderly people to overcome their fear because my experience in the years in fitness, a lot of uh, elderly people have fear to come to the gym, to have fear to come to the gym. It starts with a frozen shoulder and they start doing less instead of doing more. Uh, another point is also uh, the physical therapist most of the time when somebody has an injury bring them back to a daily life action. But what comes after that? What comes after the physical therapist? What happens mostly they go back home and they're becoming less and less active. And what my role is now, I'm going to support them, help them 
and set up different scenarios to overcome their fear. Overcome fear means basically what uh, Papain also mentioned, uh, setting up different scenarios to make their daily life actions easier, like picking up a ball from the floor, sitting up, standing down, agility exercises, balance exercises, and that is basically what I'm going to do, support them to overcome their fear. Uh, of course, one time, uh, one time a month is not enough, but this is a good step in the right direction. I think that the government has the duty to help and support elderly people to uh, maintain an active and healthy uh, lifestyle. Because at the end, if the government don't do that, uh, at the end they will do it still. Because uh, once there is uh, a, a new diabetes per chronically ill people there to have insulin your whole life that costs more than paying $50 a month to keep uh, elderly people fit. So I prefer paying $50 a month for a senior instead of waiting until the, it becomes a diabetes one or hypertension or several chronically ill diseases that Papain just mentioned. That is my role. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. I'm Sebastian, I'm here representing the WIPTA, that's the Physical Therapy Association. We'll be one of the three that is doing, uh, participating in the program by giving an exercise class uh, once a month. And as a, as a physical therapist, yeah, I also experience and see just like Papain and the <laughs> sorry, sorry. See the necess yeah, the necessary of having exercise in your life. If I see my patients, it's, I always ask them, do you do any type of sport? And too often, or well, almost all the time, you hear, no, I don't have time f for it, or I used to do this. And now, especially in the elderly, where you're going to be prone to more diseases, to more things like diabetic, osteoporosis, it's going to be even more necessary to exercise. So I'm happy that we as the WIPTA can be part of this program to help people getting more active and come out of their house, exercise, participate in the community. Like as an example, I have my grandmother. She's well in her 80s. And if I would call her house phone, She's never there. She's never answered. I have to call her on her cell because she's always busy. And I think because of she always busy and always up and down, that's why she is still so vital. Okay, that's my part. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'd like to congratulate the, the Ministry of VSR. Um, Dr. Essin, Maria Henry, and uh, Joy and all the others that are here as well. I think you guys are doing a terrific job. I'd like to thank the partners. It's wonderful to see private sector involved in being proactive, helping the ministry to make sure that our population is, is healthy. You know, um, when I first took office as, as minister, I um, made a point of going to visit each of the different departments. And when I wanted to go to visit uh, Dr. Asin in the department, I said, uh, I'm going to come down. And she said, OK, no problem. I'm going to meet you at the gate. I'm going to open the gate for you. I said, no, 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 I'm, I'm walking. She said, what? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> she says, minister, we have parking for you. But you see, this is exactly why. Because I don't like to be sedentary. I like to walk around. It's a great way to meet people. It's a great way to get feedback. But more importantly, it's also a great way to stay healthy. So you see, I was, I was correct. Um, today we're launching a program um, talking about the how do we keep our elderly healthy. And I couldn't agree more. Both my parents are in their 80s. They're both very mobile. And they switch all way into our community is, is wonderful. There's clear correlation between being, health, being active and not only being healthy, but also the quality of life. The more mobile you are, the more you interact with other people. So I think that, that 
Activity also brings with it many social aspects. You talk about playing games together, you talk about walking together. So it really, I think, besides the physical aspect to it, has a very social component to it. I also applaud the, what you're beginning with this year for 2016, the healthy children and healthy environment. Again, healthy lifestyles are learned from an early age. So the earlier we teach our children to eat well, to be active, I think the better it is for our population overall. So I'm very pleased with all of the initiatives and all of the projects that are being um, undertaken. And it fits very much the vision of the ministry of maintaining a healthy population with a high quality of life. And it's always been my belief that investments in preventative care and in healthy lifestyles have the best return on investment for the country, again, both from a social perspective from a happiness perspective in terms of our citizens being happy, and certainly, as mentioned before, from a government perspective, the best way to manage the country's health care budget is to invest it in preventative care rather than curative treatments. So I applaud the directions that you're going, and you have my full support going forward. Thank you very much. In wrapping up and in thanking everyone, I'd just like to take this opportunity to re-emphasize why we are here and the reason um, it is all about Caribbean Wellness Day. And as my previous speakers said before me, Minister Dr. Asen, and our partners has indicated that it is all about Caribbean Wellness Day in regards to healthy exercise, healthy eating, and making sure that our community is a healthy community so that we can live long and healthy. Caribbean Wellness Day promoted by CARICOM, uh, government heads with the purpose to assist shaping policy and programs to address the epidemic of non-communicable diseases or chronic diseases that begins early in life. It, it, it creates an opportunity to engage Caribbean people to practice exercise, walking from job to the supermarket, from, from um, town, especially even when it's hot, when it's hot, drink your water. But it also creates an opportunity for policymakers to be able to support or to write policy that will support infrastructure and also in regards to programs that will um, promote healthy living, not only for adult, but also for from cradle to um, the grave, unfortunately, but also a reality. But where how we maintain that, introducing them is one, but the maintenance of those programs, the promotion of those programs, and making use of that information makes it a reality in our community. So healthy lifestyle is not only in regards to public-private, but it becomes everybody business. Healthy lifestyle should be a family affair, should be a community, a collaborative community effort in regards to our partners providing the services at a discount. Um, and their free time volunteering, but also the big corporations on St. Martin to create an opportunity in regards to their workers being members of the gym or having a time where workers stand up from their desk and stretch a bit, go down the stairs, use the stairs, and also promote healthy lunch in the work environment in regards to their staff so that these staff members can trickle it into the company community into their home life environment and also to the children where is our team for today for this year um, September 10th healthy children in a healthy environment and that came because um, in the Caribbean region we have noticed that the numbers of obesity is increasing within the Caribbean it is a range of 28 to 25 percent of obesity in our children but uh, St. Martin is also part of that because in the PAHO study which we did with amongst our adolescents in 2013 it indicates that only a quarter of our school children followed health recommendation in regards to eating fruits half 46% of them are sedentary, they do not exercise, they look at videos and, they, and they watch TV, and most of the time they also consume drinks that contribute to the obes obesity rate. 
So St. Martin itself has its, has its challenge in regards to obesity. So you say, how do we do and what do we do in regards to intervening in such an epidemic? Right now, we, are, um, we have promoted breastfeeding amongst our, within our community where we take the opportunity to remind persons or parents to breastfeed and the importance of such breastfeeding. We also, within our uh, ministry, promote individual garden or backyard garden, gardening or windowsill gardening where we recommend for persons to get out and plant. Plant your own fruits and your own vegetables. It will be nice to go to your garden and pick your own tomato and go into to your kitchen and prepare your meal. In, the, in gardening, agriculture, it also calls for movement because you have to turn the dot and you have to plant and you have to, you know how the procedures are. And we also promote information in regards to reducing the consumption of salt and sugar within our community. And we ask persons to move more, to exercise. Our message is to exercise and exercise. It, it helps in regards to, and many of our, my four speakers have addressed it, in regards to the alleviating the costs in health because of the chronic, we would not have to do um, curative, but we are preventing and therefore addressing the consequences of dealing with chronic diseases. Yeah, you will see that this is a very colorful calendar and you will see three colors, um, yellow, orange, and red. And we choose those colors because these colors represent the different organizations that we work with. The yellow is the representation of White and Yellow Cross Care Foundation. Orange is the Windward Island Physical Therapist Association, WIPTA. And the red one is I and I Fitness from uh, Sergio Marica, that is the fitness center. You will see those same colors represented in the calendar. The calendar runs from September 2016 to August 2017. And with the different colors, the persons will be able to see exactly which week, what organization will have their activity and where. Because here below, we also included the location, the address of the location where that activity will happen. Um, our partners from the Department of Communication um, have been working also with us, and they will make sure that this calendar is published in the newspaper so that persons will be able to refer to the newspaper. It will also be put on the uh, government information, government website, and uh, how is the thing called again, the announcement? The info page, so that persons will be able to refer to the calendar, uh, but especially we will have to promote it also on our Facebook page, so every time it will be also on our Facebook page. And we hope that it is clear also here below, you will see the logos of all the different organizations that we have been working together with. So um, this will have to be published annually because we wanted to have a year calendar so that persons can also plan in advance where they have to go to because these activities will not happen at one location. We have different locations. For now, the WIPTA will do their activities at the White and Yellow Cross Foundation, but at some point they might also want to do an activity maybe at one of the elderly centers. But for now it will be at the White and Yellow Cross Foundation and Sergio Marica will do his activity in his gym, which is on Simpson, in Simpson Bay. But the more organizations will join, the more colors we will have to include, and we will then explain where the location is. So that is the explanation of the calendar. Also to say, um, give a little more, bit more insight on the activity for this year. As we already mentioned, the focus is on uh, youth today, and um, we received a brochure from CARFA, 
And um, what the, the Caribbean also wants is to work towards uniformity so that when we promote healthy eating, healthy living, that we send out the same message. And the CARFA, the Caribbean uh, Public Health Agency, developed this, uh, this brochure, this, this folder, for all the countries in the Caribbean to share with parents and children. Because they say if you give this to a child, and a child will educate their parents. So in uh, this guide, it, it, the guide speaks about healthy eating, tips for parents, use food from the groups, the, the food groups, uh, gives information on the calorie count, and also very important, how do you read labels? Because that is one of our weakest things. We don't read label. Our nutritionist is also in, uh, in the audience today, so she will also play a pivotal role in making sure that this information is also shared with schools and other organizations. The rest of our activities that we have planned for this year, um, together with DCOM, we have a very close collaboration with DCOM when it comes to uh, articles and, and publishing things in the newspaper, so that will continue with focus on Caribbean Wellness Day. Um, and letters already also went out to businesses and to the different gyms on uh, St. Martin to participate in Caribbean Wellness Day activity. We don't have to focus on the second day of the second Saturday of September, so it not necessarily have to be this Saturday, but anywhere in the year they can allocate at least one day to do physical activity uh, with their organization. So that is uh, going to be the activity for this year. Thank you.